Jonah, Micah, Nahum, and uh, Amos chapter number one, if you will. And while you're turning to the book of Amos, not long ago, uh, month, early October, I remember waking up and I saw on the news something had happened in Israel. And uh, I was trying to figure it out, but the little section called Gaza, people came out of Gaza and broke through that wall and attacked, uh, kidnapped, and uh, really carried away, you might say, some people into captivity, hostages. And I was like, wow. And as that progressed over the next little bit, it, it seemed to escalate. And I remember reading some things and seeing some things that I'm, I don't want to really talk about tonight, but it's, it was sort of some shocking things that was going on over there. My eyes bows are raised, and you hear the word Gaza. You hear the word Gaza. And uh, I went to visit Brother Hoover. He's had surgery, a good part of our church, him and Mrs. Hoover, and went over to their house. And Brother Hoover, this is last week, was watching a live stream of the city or the area uh, called Gaza in the southwestern uh, part of Israel. And as I was watching that, all of a sudden, uh, and he's watching, all of a sudden he's here, boom! Uh, and there was machine guns, there was explosions, and you see uh, a wall seeming to burn and, and different things like that. And he says, yeah, this uh, live stream of this, this has been going on for a while. It was dark at that period of time, and I was like, wow. That's really interesting. I didn't know you could watch something like that, a live stream cam from Gaza. And then Mrs. Hoover, she said, Pastor, did you ever see Gaza in the Bible? And I was like, well, yeah. And he says, did you ever see Gaza in the book of Amos? And I said, no. She says, well, look at this. So she opened up to Amos chapter number one right here. And she says, you got to see Amos chapter one, verses six and seven. So let's stand, if you will, for the reading of God's word. There I was in their living room, Mrs. Hoover showing me this, and Amos chapter number one, verse six says this, thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. I started scratching my head a little bit. And I, I just thought about the captivity, the hostages that they'd taken, and then the fire on the wall. And I said, I don't know. Uh, very, very interesting when you look at that. And the interesting thing is Gaza is in the Bible. And say that with me, Gaza is in the Bible. And uh, in reality, as we look at the places found where Gaza is found in the Bible, there's a lot of lessons you can, I can learn about this place called Gaza. And if you look at this picture, do you see the picture up here? Let me see this. This is the picture right there. The sermon's entitled, The Gaza Next Door. Uh, but I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza. It's going to be an interesting study today. Before we go any further, let's bow our heads, bow our hearts, and go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for your mercy, and thank you for your wisdom in putting the Bible together in an amazing fashion. And uh, Lord, we thank you for these places in the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Acts, Lord, that speak of this place called Gaza. We do pray for the mess that's going on there right now, Lord. And uh, we pray that some way, some form, some fashion, you can get honor and glory from, through that and from that. I don't know how, Lord. But Lord, I pray that you help us to focus in tonight in this place called Gaza. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The Gaza next door, this is interesting. The Gaza, we're going to go back in the book of Genesis in a moment and go back to the first mention of Gaza. But from the time of Christ, Gaza has been a, a place that's gone uh, as a place of Christianity, a place where the gospel had been spread, a place where the Roman Empire had led, a place that was prosperous in trade and agriculture. In, in the Byzantine uh, time frame, Christianity was accepted and uh, it was practiced in the region of Gaza. The seventh century, though, things began to change. The Islamic forces uh, captured the region of Gaza and turn it into an Islamic place, an Islamic dynasty, you might say. 
Uh, in the 12th century, there was the Crusades, and for those uh, two centuries, the 12th and 13th century, there was freedom until there wasn't freedom, and then there's freedom to the point where the, sol uh, the sultan in the 13th century came and brought it back under Muslim control. The Ottoman Empire uh, in the 16th to the early 20th century. After World War I, uh, the British Mandate period, uh, Gaza became uh, controlled by the British uh, government. And then after World War II, 1948 to 1967, there was an Egyptian administrator over the region of Gaza. And then there was the Israeli occupation. I'm not expecting you to understand that. There's just a lot has happened in that region of Gaza. To 1994, the Palestinian National Authority. And then from 2007 to the present Hamas control, uh, highly Muslim and uh, a very, very interesting and difficult place in the world to be, uh, to be living in. Now, to go back in time, go with me to Genesis chapter 10. And if we can, we're going to learn about Gaza. And by the way, I'm going to show you some things that are practical that will help you to learn something about the Gaza next store. In Genesis chapter number 10, really, in Genesis chapter 10, when I mention Genesis chapter 10, it's a place, you're there, Genesis chapter 10, verse number one. It says, now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were, the, were sons born after the flood. And so this chapter right here begins to talk about how the, the earth was repopulated after the flood, uh, the sons of Noah. And it's often called the table of nations. And uh, you get to verse number 19 if you look at this. It says, and the border of the Canaanites, the border of the who? Canaanites. Was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar, unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma and Zeboam, even unto Lasha. So this verse right here is saying the border of the Canaanites went from Sidon. If you go north in Israel, there's Mount Hermon in the sort of the middle of Israel, Right on the coast is Sidon, and so it's just talking about the north part of Israel all the way down to Gaza. If you see right there, the little Gaza Strip, the yellow right there, and it was laying out the, uh, the border of the Canaanites. The Canaanites had control from Sidon all the way down to uh, uh, the uh, place called Gaza. By the way, I'm not trying to bore you with this, but the Canaanites were the descendants of Canaan, the son of Ham. And it was uh, part of Noah's three sons. And so we had the descendants of Can the Canaanites were the descendants of Ham. And the place called Gaza right there was just a, it was a landmark for the Canaanites. Go over with me to the book of Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. You're going to find that Gaza is actually, as you read in your Bible, is quite familiar to you probably. And, uh, Joshua chapter 10, remember Moses uh, had died. Joshua was leading the children of Israel into the promised land. You remember that? Amen. In Joshua chapter 10, verse 29, it says, then Joshua passed, Joshua 10, verse 29, then Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him unto Libna and fought against Libna. And then it says in verse 30, and the Lord delivered it also. Then go fast forward to verse 41. And this, this is Joshua conquering the land of milk and honey specifically, you're going to notice that it was Judah and Gaza. But look at Joshua chapter 10, verse 41. And Joshua smote them from Kadesh Barnea, even unto Gaza. And so right here, it's just describing that Joshua at that period of time is battling in the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land. Part of that region is conquering the land of Gaza. And so if you understand where we're going tonight, is there's a lot of history of Gaza. There's history in 2023, a war going on, but it goes back all the way back to right after Noah, Ham, Sham, and Japheth, the Canaanites. And uh, in Joshua chapter number 15, go, go with me to Joshua chapter 15 really quick. Joshua chapter number 15, in verse 20, in verse 20, this is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah. Now, as soon as I say Judah, you're going to remember the, the, the promised land was divided in 
different lands by the different tribes. Judah uh, was part of the, the tribe that conquered the southern region of Israel. And Gaza is in the southern region of Israel. So as you read a little bit further, chapter 15, verse 47, it's going to make sense. It's describing it. Look at verse 47. It says, Ashdod with her towns and her villages, Gaza with her towns and her villages under the river of Egypt. And so Judah went and conquered that region of Gaza. Okay. It's also mentioned in Judges chapter number one, verse 18. It says, and Judah took Gaza with the coast thereof. Now, Go over to Judges chapter number 16. I'm going through here. And so, you know, Gaza has a present day uh, land. Uh, there's a, a fight going on there currently in 2023. But right after the flood, the descendants of Ham, the Canaanites, they dwelt in the land of, of Canaan, they called it right there, from Sidon all the way to Gaza. And then we get to Joshua. Judah took over that land right there, the, the kingdom of, or the, uh, not the southern, but that tribe of Judah conquered the land of Gaza. Here we're going to find that in the book of Judges, right after that period of Joshua, Judges chapter 16, you're going to meet a man named Samson. It says, then went Samson to Gaza. Say that with me. Then went Samson to Gaza, and watch this, and saw there on, and went in unto her. And so here's the first point tonight. There is sin in Gaza. There is sin in Gaza. This, this, as you read a little bit further in this chapter, is a city of the Philistines, a city that is worshiping false gods, a, a, a city where sin is prevalent. And here is God's man, Samson, uh, anointed really to uh, be a judge, to be a servant, to be a deliverer for God's people. And he's going over to that Gaza next door, the Gaza next door, and he's going and leading himself to the sin of Gaza. And, and that's, that's sort of why, where I came with that title, the uh, Gaza next door. We have cities around us, uh, cities of the Philistines that have sin, but Samson should have never gone to the city of Gaza to go to be with the harlot. Somebody say amen. And we think about the sin of Gaza, the sin of Gaza, and sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. Look at Judges chapter number 16, verse 20. And this is shortly after, it talked about the gates. It called the, the people of Gaza the Gazites in chapter 16, verse 2. Uh, this is right after Delilah tricked him. In verse 20, it says, and she said, Delilah said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not, you see that? He wist not that the Lord was departed from him. And that slippery slope of sin, going down to a harlot, eventually getting consumed with a Delilah in your life and then uh, telling them the things that you shouldn't be telling and all of that. He lost his power and, and you know, he's gonna go serve God like he did at other times, but he didn't even know that God had departed from him. And boy, that's a sad, sad time when you live a life of sin. Sin, maybe it's hidden from everybody else, but God sees it. Boy, you, you can't live a powerful life. Boy, it affects your marriage, it affects your family, it affects your ministry. He wist not that God had departed from him right there. Look at verse 21, look at this. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to where? Gaza. Gaza. And you think about that. It's a main story in the Bible about Gaza, the sin of Gaza. Hey, the sin of Gaza, uh, the Gaza that's next door in our life, stay away from it. Don't go down to a harlot in Gaza. Stay away from that. Samson's journey down to Gaza was marked by personal failure, failure and it serves as a warning. Uh, and it turns as a warning and really a beacon of light to shine upon that sin of Gaza right there that we need to stay far from. Somebody say amen. Go back with me to the book of Amos, chapter number one, if you will. The sin of Gaza. This one, where we started in Amos chapter one, I, I like this chapter. One of my favorite, actually, portions of Scripture, the first three chapters of the book of Amos, and uh, I loved it. In Amos chapter 1, it, it begins to talk about the words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, and he was just a herdman. He was a small country bumpkin from outside of Jerusalem in a place called Tekoa, and God says, hey, I want you to go up to Samaria, I want you to go up to Israel, and I want you to give them a message from God. 
And Amos, like we all should, God tells us he wants us to do something. We say, yes, sir. And he goes up to that, uh, that, play, that city of, of Samaria in the northern kingdom of Israel that's not right with God, that's far away from God. He gets in that town square and he begins to say, if you look at verse number three, thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Damascus and for four. For three transgressions of Damascus and for four. I'll illustrate that. Uh, the other day, I got done with church. It was late at night. I had my bike. I'm going to ride my bike home. My Amos wants to ride in the back seat of my bike. I got the little seat right there. And then all of a sudden, my, my Nehemiah says, Dad, can I ride on the handlebars? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. And then all of a sudden, Sam Sam comes up. He's a little older. He says, Dad, can I ride too? I was like, well, I guess we could try it. And uh, so had Le Levi on the handlebars, Amos in the car, and then all of a sudden my Sam Sam started crawling on my back. He put his leg over on my, and got on there. And I, I, I tried to drive home on that bike on that, but for three, it was sort of like when Sam got on my, my, my you, know, you understand my shoulders right there, it was sort of the straw that broke the daddy's back. You understand that? So for three transgressions and for four, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back right there. I've given you three chances, but this fourth chance right there, there's some punishment uh, for what you've done. Look at verse number six. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four. That period of time when the uh, Bible is written about Amos, he's up there and he's giving this illustration of this sermon to the people of Samaria. And he begins to say, hey, the straw that broke the camel's back, the reason there is judgment come upon Gaza. This is an important phrase. There's judgment that's come upon Gaza. And it actually tells you why. It's, it says, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. Gaza is going to be punished. Why? Because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. Boy, the, the people of Gaza had gone in and really stolen some people, took them hostages, and took them to the region of Edom right there. And God was like, man, you can't do that. God taking God's people and stealing them. Then it says this, and I, I, but I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. And he says, there's judgment coming. Now, some people will say, well, look at 2023. It's the judgment of God fulfilled from the book of Amos. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But we know one thing for certain, there was judgment upon Gaza. Judgment upon Gaza. And this is important. You know, we, we want to be careful of the Gaza next door. Because sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Sin without a Savior leads to hell. That's why we need a Savior. Jesus saves. Amen. Praise God, he paid it all. But we don't want to adopt the attitudes and actions that oppose God's will. The people of Gaza had adopted an attitude and actions that were adamantly against God, and all of a sudden they, they did a sin that broke the camel's back, you might say, and whammo, God's judgment is coming. And that's what leads to that famous verse that I, I often mention, Amos chapter 3, verse 3, quote it with me, can two walk together except they be agreed? It's saying, hey, uh, northern kingdom of Israel, turn around, get right. Go the same direction. Follow God's law, God's rules, God's way. God's justice is real. It's noticeable. Do right. Boy, the judgment that came upon the sin of Gaza, the judgment on the Gaza next door. By the way, the people around us who sin and laugh and mock at God, they're going to one day have to stand before God. And they don't get away with sin. You never get away for, with sin and, uh, because God sees and God handles and God takes care of it. Now, go over to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 8. Several other places in the Bible where Gaza is mentioned, but this is going to be the, the only time in the New Testament it's mentioned, and a wonderful story in Acts chapter number 8. As soon as I say turn to Acts chapter 8, you, you know what's going to happen. The, uh, the man named Philip and the Ethiopian Eunuch. Okay, good, 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 good. And if you don't know that, it's okay. You'll learn that. This is a, a wonderful chapter in the scriptures. Acts chapter number 8, verse 26 says this. In Acts chapter 8, verse 26, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south 
unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. It mentions Gaza. So here Philip is going down from Jerusalem to the way called Gaza. And he arose and went. Praise God, he did the will of the Lord. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had cha charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. And, and we know this story, or, and some of you will come familiar with it. Uh, Philip jumps in that chariot. He says, understandest what thou readest. The eunuch looks at him and says, how can I except some man guide me? And the Bible says he took him at the same place and preached unto him Jesus. He took him at the same place and preached unto him Jesus. Now here's the point. The gospel was put, taken to Gaza. And so we, there's judgment in the land of Gaza, yes. Uh, we, we look at that, we think about that, we uh, think about the sin of Gaza. Remember Samson and the sin of Gaza. But Gaza needs the gospel. Amen. Gaza needs the gospel. Boy, sinners need to be saved by the precious blood of Jesus. Praise God for this Philip being willing, willing to be spirit-led and go to Gaza and give the gospel. Here was a man, uh, an Ethiopian eunuch, who was reading, studying, but he says, "Understand? how can I? How can I? I need you to help me. And there's lots of people in the world today who I, I, I really believe want the truth, desire the truth, that need a you and need a me to sit down, talk with them, see them, notice them, and help them, guide them to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're all sinners who need a Savior. Jesus, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the same uh, this, uh, sin of the world. And as you know, in Acts chapter number uh, 8, verse 36, what doth hinder me to be baptized? He says, if thou believest that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, thou mayest. And praise the Lord, he got saved and he got baptized to the glory of God. Why? The gospel in Gaza. Boy, I want to say thank you. The, the ladies who went out on Tuesday, and a good group of ladies, it went out about, was everybody friendly? Absolutely not. There were some doors where uh, somebody took one of the gospel tracks that was put on the door and just to spite, took it off, ripped it up right in front of them, threw it in the trash. You know, they, they have to stand before God. That, that's okay. Uh, we're, we try to give the gospel to them, though, they need the gospel. Then one of the other ladies didn't know it and went up and was about to go talk to that same lady again, which, I mean, that's good too, I guess. Uh, but the gospel needs to be given. Praise God for those ladies taking their time and effort and energy. Boy, Brother Bud, you, you've been working on and passing out those gospel tracts with the free turkeys and been doing your part, and we talked about it, and I was like, woo, man, Bud, he's like, I'm going to have me some visitors on Sunday. And you know what? I, I want a whole church with people that say, I'm going to have me some visitors on Sunday. And hopefully they, they get the gospel and get gloriously saved. You and me, Brother Bud, are, by the way, we're going to go do a visit. A man in his 90s, I think 95, and uh, Brother Bud took me over his house a while back, and we gave him the gospel. He got saved. Now he's in the hospital uh, a few years later. We're going to go visit him. And, and what he's doing, they need Jesus. And that story can be told all around in our church, but let, let's go get us one. Amen. Let's go tell somebody about the Lord. Let's bring somebody to church. Let's uh, give the gospel in our Ga Gaza that's next door. Let's try our best to tell people, be faithful to tell people about Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Don't be Samson. Don't go to the sin of uh, Gaza. Hey, be very careful. Remember that uh, Gaza looks like they may be getting away with it, but judgment's coming. They broke that final straw. That, that straw broke the camel's back right there. And they were called to be like Philip, bringing the light of the glorious gospel to Gaza. In our lives, we often have that Gaza next door. Man, we have. And uh, Gaza historically has been at odds with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they desperately need the gospel. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Fascinating for me. I enjoyed this study. And Lord, I can, in my brain, trace God's all the way back to Genesis chapter 10, that table of nations, the Canaanites, uh, the descendants of Ham. And Lord, I can trace it into the book of Joshua and the book of Judges. I can see how Judah uh, conquered that land. That was their, their spot to conquer when they inhabited the land of milk and honey. I can see the sin 
of Samson going down to Gaza and doing a terrible sin with a harlot, Lord. Lord, we can look at how you cared for those people in Gaza, Lord, by sending Philip to them and that Ethiopian eunuch getting saved, Lord. And I pray that we look at uh, this Gaza. We see the Gaza next door in our life. We be careful of the sin. We be careful of the sin of Gaza and we give the gospel to the people of Gaza. Lord, we love you. Thank you for this Bible study. In Jesus' name, amen.